Hey guys, how you doing? Welcome to the video. Welcome to my, well, I usually say welcome to my garage, but right now we're in the, uh, we're in my basement and I have, I have a vintage battery charger right here that I just got off of eBay. Um, those of you that watch my channel regularly know that I'm into radio controlled stuff as well as fabrication and things like that. And for whatever reason, one thing that I'm really into is the vintage battery chargers. And when I say vintage, I mean typically late 70s to late 90s for the most part. Back when radio-controlled cars were uh, kind of at their infancy. When we were talking NICAD nickel metal hydride batteries. But this charger is from the 60s. And I thought it was kind of cool. So I picked it up and I'm going to clean it up. It's got some... Uh, it's got some blemishes on there, some crud here. You can see the the char the timer actually doesn't work, and I'm not really worried about that, but I'll take this all apart. I'll take the faceplate off here. I'll clean everything up. This old plastic, you can actually polish it. You can even wet sand it and polish it just to make it look a little bit nicer. I'll take all the wires and cut them and then push them back in and then resolder them so it looks like a nice clean connection and it came with some vintage alligator clips here oh, those are really worn out anyways i'll just clean it up get it looking nice and put it on my shelf but oh and check this out this is the this is the reason that i bought it there's actually a lot of these floating around on ebay but this one comes with the instructions it's got a chart on charging the batteries and it's got some instructions just in great great shape and when you're when you're collecting things it's really nice when you can get stuff old stuff I mean this thing's from it says 1963 that's crazy I wasn't even born yet uh, but when they come with instructions that's really cool anyways let's go up to the garage because we sold our Volvo s40 so I'm getting a little bit more space in the garage so I'm gonna go up there and I'm going to kind of, I've, I've had Ratchet pushed off to the side of the garage. So I'm going to, I'm going to kind of uncover him and move him over to where the Jeep used to be because I slid the Jeep over to where the Volvo S40 used to be. Now, finally, let's get to the bulk of this video. Recently, I've painted two chassis in my garage. I painted them both quite differently, so I figured this was a good opportunity for me to uh, put this in a video and share with you guys the two different ways that I did it with the results and why I did it the two ways. For me, if I'm doing a garage paint job, there's basically two types of paint I'm going to consider using. Rust-Oleum Flat Black, flat whatever color you want, but it has to be flat because with the flat paints, you can put it on there, you can make a repair, you can scratch it up, you can just go right back over it and because it's flat, it blends in really nice. If you're using a gloss or a semi-gloss, you can't do that. It's really hard to blend in, if not impossible with a Rust-Oleum type paint to blend in or repair. 
Once the Rust-Oleum dries after about a week, it's actually pretty strong. But if you want it to be as strong as possible, use the Steel-It paint. Steel-It paints are expensive. This paint right now I think is like eight or nine dollars a can. Steel-It is thirty dollars a can. That's no joke. A quart of Rust-Oleum flat black right now is I think fourteen ninety-nine. A quart of steel it is $95. So there's a big difference there. The steel it is better for sure. But regardless, those is as far as I'm concerned, those are the two options you have. Bearing in mind, these chassis are meant for off-road use. If you're trying to build a chassis for a show car or something that you really want to be nice, you might want to use some actual automotive paint, although those would be tough because they're probably going to be a gloss. But anyways. For me, I went with Rust-Oleum Flat. The next thing you have to consider is how are you gonna apply the paint to the chassis? When I did Ratchet's chassis, I wanted him to be as nice as I could possibly do it, remembering that I'm doing a garage paint job. So I wanted to spray his, and actually the first thing I was going to try to do was to spray it with this uh, automotive sprayer. I thought this was gonna be the ticket. This sucked. It sucked for two reasons. Actually, it sucked for three reasons. The first reason is the shape of this was, was really awkward because of this can. I mean, the sprayer itself is pretty small, and you'd think this would be less cumbersome than a spray can, but because on the spray can, the spray is coming out with basically nothing above it, on this, the spray is coming out here, but you've got all this. I could not get this in the chassis, and Ratchet's chassis had lots of tubes going everywhere, so it was really tight. And it had a full-size air hose going to it, which was a nightmare, trying to hold that up. And then uh, the worst part was this gun just does not much paint comes out of here. So with fighting all that stuff, I wasn't getting much paint. So after experimenting with this, this did not work for me at all. So then I switched to more of a more of a modeling little spray gun. These surprisingly you can put out more paint than you would think with these and it's very very tiny. So that's pretty awesome and the hose is just this little dinky thing. So I thought this was maybe going to be the answer, but I thinned the paint a little bit and I had it cranked up all the way and the answer is this was better than the other one, but it just didn't put out enough paint. It was, it was going to be a nightmare. And surprisingly, both of these actually had more overspray than you would think. I was trying to set it up so that my air pressure was low, but my volume was high, so that I could keep the overspray to a minimum. But even at that, I was fighting a battle between pressure low, volume up, it didn't work. I would end up turning the pressure up to get more volume, but then I had boatloads of overspray. So I gave up on those because it was going to take me four and a half years to paint the chassis using those. So I went to the spray can. Like I said, it took 10 spray cans. The spray cans actually worked pretty well. They put out a lot of paint, so I was able to paint pretty fast. Their overspray is, is pretty bad, but it wasn't horrific. When I painted Ratchet's chassis, I had uh, built like a paint booth with, uh, I had draped plastic. I did it under here so I could hang plastic off the ceiling here. And I basically wrapped the entire chassis with uh, plastic because the overspray was horrific. And I wore a Tyvek suit and a mask. And it took me, I think, I think four days to get it uh, from start to finish. And I would have to pull all of the cars out of the garage. And it was, uh, it was really a big project, big project. But it worked and the results were actually pretty good. This is the paint job on Ratchet. It's actually, I mean, I know it's a little bit dirty and there's a bunch of, bunch of stuff on here, but it's actually really, really smooth. I was actually, I was quite happy with how this turned out. And this is Rust-Oleum flat black, just out of spray cans. That's pretty darn good. And I've only had two runs on this chassis since I painted it, but I haven't had any major scratching issues or anything like that. 
this gets hit pretty good from uh, rocks from the front tire, and I don't have any major. I mean, it's going to scratch, don't get me wrong, but it's not bad. Now, when it came time to paint Mauler here, I didn't want to go through all that hassle of building a little paint booth and then every single time I paint, having to move all of the vehicles out onto the driveway and then deal with all the overspray. Even when I made a little paint booth for Ratchet, I still had overspray on my toolboxes just because it would just seep through the cracks and get and get everywhere. Plus, just my hair would have it, like every single time I sprayed, when I was done spraying, the first thing I would have to do is go take a shower, just get all this stuff out of my hair. So it was, it was pretty rough. Like I said, the results were good, but I wanted to try something a little bit different with Mauler. So what I did is using the same paint, uh, but using the, the court this time, the first thing that I did, like you saw in that time lapse, is I just ran around and brush painted the entire, the entire chassis, everything from the front to the back, every single piece. And yes, it took some time. I think it took, well, kind of like Ratchet, it took three or four days, but I'm not done. So what I did is I ran around and I did the first coat with the paintbrush. Actually, if I'm being completely truthful, the first thing I did, and this goes for, this goes for Ratchet as well. The first thing I do is run around and wipe down the entire chassis, I mean every single tube, with lacquer thinner. I used lacquer thinner on Mahler. I used acetone on Ratchet. Either one is gonna get, get done what you need. You're just looking to get any oil residue or dirt off of the tubing. So I run through and wipe every single tube with lacquer thinner to get it clean. Then I ran around with a brush and just painted every single tube. And that gave me a pretty good finish. Not perfect, I'll show you. So when you do it with the brush, the finish isn't bad, but you can see it's a little bit harder to pick up with the camera here, but if you can, you can kind of tell that at this section, I was running the brush this way. Same thing with, yeah, I think that's better. You can see some brush marks, and really the reason that you see them is there are some differences in the thickness. So where it's a little bit thicker or a little bit lighter, you can kind of see the brush strokes. So you do get some brush strokes, and if I left it like this, I probably wouldn't be really, really happy with it because if somebody walks up in the sunlight, they're gonna be able to see these brush marks and uh, yeah, it's not the end of the world, but you don't want that. But what I've learned is once you get your, your, fo your first coat on there with the brush, then you go back over it with a roller and it has to be a foam roller like this. Don't try using a big furry one like you would use for painting a house. Use these, these foam brushes and just do one final coat where you go over all the tubes with this roller. That's what I'm gonna do next. That is it. I have now brush painted it. Actually, I wiped it, I brush painted it, I rolled it, and I actually wiped it down with a rag. 
and now it is done. I'll probably give it two or three days just to sit, even though it, it feels, it's been about 12 hours since I rolled it, but it feels really, really dry, but I'll probably wait a couple days before I start bolting parts on just, just to really let it cure up nice and solid. Uh, let me take the camera off and give you a little close up here. I think it actually came out really well. It's not as nice as Ratchet's chassis where I sprayed it, but honestly for, for brush painting and then just rolling it once just to get rid of some of the brush marks, I'm really happy with this. And uh, it was easy. It took a week and it was a pain actually brushing stuff like this. I actually sprayed it just so that it, I would have a nice smooth look. Um, it was a pain, don't get me wrong, actually brushing it, but it was so easy not having to roll all the cars out and build a little paint booth in here. All right, that's it for the video, guys. I just wanted to give you some, let's call it tips and tricks as to different ways that you can paint a chassis if you're painting it in your own garage, like I have been. I hope it helps you with whatever projects you're working on. Maybe it just entertains you for a little bit, and I hope to see you on the next video. Take care.